Okay, welcome to another Orbiter video, and this is the series where we're going to Vesta. So let's go ahead and switch camera views and jump right into it. All right, so in the last video, we set up Interplanetary MFD. Uh, we used Transex to find a good date, and then we set up Interplanetary MFD to actually set up our mission out to Vesta. Now, we filled up the... Let me just check one thing. Okay, doors are closed. We filled up the... XR5, we gave two oxygen modules to give us 614 days of air, which is a lot more than we need. But you can't have half of, you can't have a module that has half oxygen and half fuel in it. So I just two two locks and everything else is main fuel. Now I don't actually know how much delta V I have, so I'm gonna see if I can figure that out. I go to burn time calculator and so this is the other thing is this won't be super accurate because this is based on the engine ISP is you know when we're sitting here on earth we're not going to get an accurate number like right now it says that we have 4.5 K worth of Delta V and in fact In fact, okay, let me think about something. All right, so first of all, if I add in, if I tell Burn Time Calculator to include the extra fuel that we added, and remember, we added 30 modules, and each one of those modules has 13,000 kg of main fuel. So if we do a quick calculation on that, that's going to be 30. Hover doors are closed. That's going to be 30 times 13,000. So 390,000 extra kg of main fuel, 390,000. And that shows that we have basically 16K of Delta V, but that is based on the, but we're in, we're not in a vacuum right now. So that number doesn't mean a lot. So let me actually try this. I don't want to move this XR5 because I'm not sure what would happen. I'm not sure if I can easily put it back here on this spot of the runway. So let me do a new ship and XR5 test. I just want to find out how much Delta V that would be in a vacuum. So XR5 Vanguard, set input, create. Wheels all Vanguard systems nominal. Okay, so let's get inside this Vanguard. And yeah, you can see, you know, in a vacuum it has 13K of Delta V. Now, of course, the loadout is different because we only have the basic locks at the moment, you know, 14 days. So I want to give the I want to give this vessel the same loadout as the other one. This is where my old spreadsheets came in handy, and I still have them, but I'm just not, um, you know, I'm just not in the habit of using them yet. But this is what I used those old spreadsheets to do, so I wouldn't have to do stuff like this. I could just figure it all out. So I'm going to give myself locks two, tanks full. two locks. So you can see we have the same. Now, technically, we are burning some locks, but it's not going to make a difference. And then I'm going to select main fuel and fill. So I just filled up this vessel. So this has now the same loadout Information. as APU running. This has the same loadout as the other one. So now if I add in the extra fuel mass, 390,000. So we have 20, yeah, about 19 and a half uh, K worth of Delta V. Boy, that doesn't even seem like enough to me, honestly. Because it's going to take... Yeah, that's that doesn't seem like enough. Now I'm worried about this mission. So, because we know what it's going to take the better part of ten thousand delta v just to get into orbit, and then we saw in interplanetary we're going to need eleven thousand. So yeah, that doesn't work. Let me think about that. We do have scram fuel though. I just don't know how much that's going to help. Okay, well, we're going to we're going to try it anyway. 
So let's just let's just continue on. And what we'll do when we get up into orbit, and we'll see how things are going at that point. And if it just looks like it's going to be a complete fail, this will be a learning experience, and we'll figure out a different way to get to Vesta. Okay, so let's bring back up interplanetary on this side. And yeah, we have everything set up, so let's just go ahead and warp time forward. Let me make sure I have external cooling turned on. Do. And let's warp time forward until we are closer to the time to launch. Now, we are one full day away from launch time, so we could potentially pass this one and go to the next one. But I think I'll just go ahead and take this one. Okay, so 7,000 seconds out, 6,000, 5, 4... And now, again, this thing takes a lot longer than the XR2 to get up into orbit, so we want to leave a little bit sooner. Don't know by how much. Maybe, let's call it 500 seconds. Alright, so let's... Yeah. Alright, let's go back to real time, and let's get ready to fly. Come down here, turn off external cooling, on board O2. turn on the APU. Let me check one more time. Those doors are indeed closed. Everybody sees it, they're closed. Nose cone, everything's closed. Don't be an idiot. Alright, now... So I'm going to plan on using the autopilot for this flight rather than the joystick because again depending on which order I upload my videos in you will have seen that you know taking off using the flight stick was not a good time Hitch. so oh. all right we said about 500 seconds that's now let's go for it full power on the main engines lock the main engines and Wow, this thing is a tank and a half. 100 knots. Yeah, when I initially tried to take off from White Sands, uh, probably been over a month by now, it was just like ridiculous. The thing was bouncing all over the place and I ended up crashing and killing the entire crew just because you can't, the runway is so bumpy. So there's V1. I feel like I'm almost at the end of the runway already. There went one fuel module. Rotate. All right, there's our rotate. So let's engage the autopilot. Okay, so it looks like we made it up. And let's start banking. Now we can't bank aggressively. I've noticed in the uh, in the Vanguard, um, the XR2 I can pretty much turn it on its side and bank over. But I find that when I try to do that in the Vanguard. The velocity vector drops below the horizon quickly, so we just have to be a bit more patient. So there's our second fuel module. We've just barely gotten off the ground. We've already burned through two, two fuel modules. So that's 26,000 kg of fuel gone, and we have barely got off the ground. You know. Seems like it's just using a lot of RCS. Let me try to... Let me disengage that for now. Boy, that's dangerous. And let me see if I can just get rotated over to 90 first. You know, get my heading locked in, and then I'll turn... I'll go back to the autopilot. There's another module. That's another 13,000 kilograms of fuel gone. So we're almost over to 90, but more importantly than 90 is that EIN. That's essentially our uh, relative inclination. I'm not sure why Interplanetary MFD calls it EIN, but it's the same thing. Alright, so we're about 90. So I'm going to roll out. And I'm going to zero out my bank and re-engage the autopilot. And now I should be able to control... No, I, I don't want to pitch up as aggressively in the XR5. Well, you can see my velocity is already going down, so we don't want that. 
So let me pitch the nose down a bit because we need to make sure that we're increasing in velocity. But now that I'm more or less lined up, I can now use just small amounts of bank angle to control my EI under my relative inclination. But yeah, just the ride to orbit's probably going to be a two-part video because of the amount of time the Vanguard requires for getting up into orbit. Oh wow, we're already at... So we climbed much quicker than I thought we would. Alright, so now I'm going to mostly go level... Oops, I overshot my angle there, so let me go back the other way for a moment. But I'm going to mostly go level with the horizon now, because we really just want to concentrate on picking up horizontal speed. And let me go back now to level, or back to a zero bank, and see if I can hold, you know, a close to zero relative inclination. So I'm going to put in just one tap of bank, and then take it back out immediately. I just want to get the vessel going in that direction so that the relative inclination is coming down. Alright, so we burned through, I think that's 5. So 13,000 times 5 worth of fuel, and we have barely gone anywhere. You can probably still see probably still see the base back behind us. Oh, actually, I've never set up cameras on the XR5, so I'll have to do that. Forgot about that. Mach 2. Alright, so we don't really need this up right now, so I'm going to go to orbit on that side. Just so we can keep an eye on things here. And it looks like our inclination is climbing a bit, so I believe I need to go... I believe I want a tap to the right. No, nope, wrong way. So let me tap it to the left. And then once that number starts going down, I'm just going to immediately go back to a zero bank angle. You can see how quickly it changes. Alright, so we are going to use our scram fuel, but the XR5, I, I don't think it's any benefit at all out of scram engines until you're over a thousand meters a second. So. I'm just going to tap to the right for just one moment, and then back to center, just to try to start pushing the relative inclination more in the other direction. Alright, so let's go ahead and take out a little bit more of our pitch, so that we're pushing mostly forward with our speed, so that we can pick up some, horizon uh, some, vert some horizontal velocity. There goes another module. Let's see where we're at. So 11 minus 3, that's 8. So I think we've burned through 8 modules so far. And we're still... We haven't gone anywhere. <laughs> Alright, so we're north of 1,000 meters a second now. Let me get a little bit faster. Because when I was checking this last time, I noticed that uh, when, as soon as I took out the main... It was our speed was decreasing, so I think we need to be going a little bit faster yet. Bring down the pitch just a little bit more. There goes another module. That's number nine. All right, let me see now if we can make use of our scram fuel. Mach four. I hate dragging those because sometimes it drags them out of proportion. Alright, so let's see what happens as I start backing off the main. So we are... So the velocity is still increasing, but I feel like if I take out all of the main, we're going to end up slowing down. Okay, so it looks like around 1,400 meters a second is what you need. Okay, so all the main engine, all the main engines cut. Now we're strictly on scram. So yeah, it looks like around 1,300, 1,400. Of course, it will depend on the vehicle loadout. This is loaded up as about as heavy as it can be. Did I ever raise the landing gear? Yes, I did. Okay. 
Okay. All right, so our inclination is a bit out. I think I've kind of lost track of which direction I have to go. I want to say right, which means it's probably left. Yes, of course. So just a little tap that way, and then back to zero on the bank angle, so that you know I'm just sliding a little bit more closer to that razor's edge. And we're only off by, you know, 0 0.09 at this point, so it's not a huge amount. All right, let me go to this view. These are much easier to see. Mark and I've, I had a, a, a multiple requests by the same person to switch back to 1080 on my resolution. And it's unfortunate that the XR vessels have, have not been updated so that their panels will expand out like the Delta Glider and some of the other vessels. Information. Send Doug Beachy an email 90%. and request it, I guess. <laughs> uh, I did actually try to change my orbiter display to 1080, but it still doesn't look right. And I'm not willing to put my display into a small window or something like that. Alright, so I can hear those scram engines really ramping up now. So that means we should keep an eye on our temperature. Okay, APU's on. Yeah, it needs to be. probably start adding some angle, some pitch angle to our vessel because those engines are really ramping up. You can hear them getting louder and louder. And I want to make, make sure I stay ahead of the heat curve. Right now we're in good shape. And we're cooling off a little bit, so that means we're a little bit higher than we probably should be. Must be the Jupiter planetary system there. Yep. And we're still cooling off pretty much all over the vessel, so we're okay on our as far as our temperatures go. All right, let's look outside. All right, let's take a look at where we are over the surface of the Earth. So let's track our location and zoom in. So we're probably, was that Texas? Yeah. All right, temperature is okay. 40 kilometers in altitude, or about one third orbital velocity. So a ways to go yet. Let's look at our number here. So uh, I'm going to bank a bit to the left. Start bringing down that inclination. And I'll hold on to this bank angle for just a moment. And now we're starting to warm up a little bit, but we're no danger of overheating anytime soon. I'm going to go ahead and go back to zero on that bank angle. So, because I, I don't want to overshoot in the other direction by a huge amount. Just check. Yeah, bank angle zero. And to switch back and forth between these views, I'm using the number two. So that's at the top of the keyboard, not the numeric keypad. So two shows me the autopilot information, and three shows me my temperature display. So inclination starting to climb again, so I'm going to tap four on the numeric keypad to add in a bit of bank angle, try to get that inclination down. Looks like the velocity vector is starting to get really close to the horizon, which means we're not really climbing very much. All right, back to zero on the bank angle. About 44 kilometers. Temperatures are looking pretty good. Quite a bit of scram fuel left, so... I don't know if we'll burn through all of it, though. Any, any amount that we don't use is a waste. So hopefully we get through all of it, or most of it. 
if I have to dump a couple of kg once we get into orbit, that's okay. I just don't want to end up in orbit with, you know, 25 or 30 percent remaining because that's a lot of mass that you were carrying that did you no good. So inclination is almost back to zero, but it's it's tending toward the positive. So I'm going to put in a bit of bank angle to the left just to help keep that down. And just let it track in the other direction for a couple of decimal points and then go back to zero on the bank angle. So about 47 kilometers in altitude. About not quite half orbital velocity yet. Go back to zero on the bank angle. I'll keep an eye on the temperatures. So temperatures are holding in there really well really stable. This ascent, file, this ascent profile feels pretty good actually. Alright, let me go ahead and hit pause right here. Switch camera views. And since we're over 20 minutes on this part of the video, I'm going to go ahead and end it here. And when we come back in the next part, hopefully we will finish our ride to orbit. I'll see you in the next video.